The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm CJ. And it's Friday. Uh, in the rib. Friday in the rib. Friday and just, in the just to give you a heads up now, we'll remind you at that at the end of the show, there will be no shows next Monday or Wednesday. Yeah. So it will be two days. Then we'll come back on Friday, and we'll then we'll be off on Monday again for the holiday. We will see <laughs> you. We will see you on Friday. I will be doing research on Tex-Mex food in Texas. So. <laughs> uh, and bike paths. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, and yeah, working, so and working public transit. I mean, we got a ton of, we got a, a bunch of stuff here, but. Well, uh, let's you know, start right off with the mayor's budget. The mayor's budget, we might be there all, sh the, the whole show, because, you know, uh, of course, they backed off, he's backed off on the, uh, on, on implementing early the debt override, because he must, I think to me, this, at least in my opinion, confirms he is running if he's not in jail. Uh, he's, he's talked about, he actually talked about uh, he hasn't unable to crack the code. This is his quote. The budget reflects two and a half. And he, he says he's been able to crack the code to alleviate that and hinted maybe next year, just like he didn't, he, he didn't get rid of the bags until he was, it, there was an election coming up, a recall election. He didn't get rid of the fees unless he was running for election. So right now, he's got the rest of his term. So he, he's, gonna, he's got that promise now, unable to crack the code. I'm going to give you a hint. Mr. Mayor, you want to crack the code and not raising taxes? Stop giving all your friends jobs. Mary Sahadi a forty thousand dollar pay raise. Uh, Kathy Ann a twenty thousand dollar pay raise. Your your uh, your chief of staff ten thousand dollars for showing up when there's a snowstorm, even though she's getting a salary that says she works and has all her duties. But Five thousand dollars you, stipend you for special assistance. You assistant. haven't cracked the code. Well, the code is you're spending like a drunken sailor, and you don't care about the taxpayer. And as promised, remember, not only are you going to get a ten ten dollar increase in your water, it's not. There's now a new ten dollar fee if you appeal a, a ticket, and they're all over the place. Actually, I saw a meeting made today with a traffic vehicle on my street. They're looking for expired stickers and whatever they can give you and and uh, they're going up and down streets looking for, looking for things to tag because you know as promised on Wednesday show it's here <laughs> all dressed up like a flower like politicians are they wear their suits and ties when they appear before the council or when they're sitting on the council floor because it's it's standard you know if you can't be professional look like one and what did they do? Two and a half, max. Increase in water fees. Tiff, 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 tiff. In coming out of your pocket, and all the people that live out of town and run businesses get a tax break. And lower tax rate on their businesses. Higher tax rate on your bit, on your life, your livelihood, your home. Hit. That taxpayer, by the way, this is the taxpayer hat that I'm, <laughs> I'm hitting here. All right? I'm smacking a living crap out of them. Because you know something? That's what they do. They can't crack the code. Well, I'll tell you what. They say if you, if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. Well, this is a case where you should learn from history and repeat it. Because many years ago, we didn't see not just raising to the max of two and a half. We saw many years where there was absolutely no tax raise. As a matter of fact, if you raised taxes, you were probably out of office if you did it two consecutive years. Not two and a half either. If you raised them at all, you were out of office. 
Why? Because in those days, rather than have our millennial philosophy where give me everything, I can't write a check, I can't do my own laundry, but I'll tell you how to run the government, I'll give all my friends who never had a real job a nice high-paying job with the city. They said things like bare bones budgets, lean governments, doing more with less, streamlining government. We had all those euphemisms for small government. We spent our money where we needed it, public safety, education. We didn't have the mayor had, we had more than double the amount of city employees. The mayor didn't have a chief of staff. He didn't have, what's the other euphemistic title for? Special assistant. Special assistant. They got a cabinet now to run the city. And he's making more money than the mayor did then. The mayor had a, he actually had two secretaries then. Um, they didn't work simultaneously most of the time, but if it got busy, they did. He had two secretaries. We got all these tears and tears in government. We've got all these tears and tears. Look at the education. Look at, the, look at Durfee. When Durfee's population and the school population was much bigger, the entire city population was much bigger. There, was more pe there were more people in every department, police, fire, DPW, every department. School department, highest student population. Did we have a dean of students in the middle school? No. Did we have assistants to the assistants to the assistants, principals and, and people who oversee uh, every conceivable aspect and the new superintendent wants even more people, more administrators with six-figured salaries or close to six-figured salaries. But they can't crack the code. You know why they can't crack the code? Because they don't want to. Because that code lines their pockets, all their friends' pockets, and brings them campaign contributions from the people who they take care of, like they do with the CPA money. So, you know, when I read this stuff, it makes me crazy. Every time at budget time, and then the thing is, it's funny, we're, we're going through a budget, and I, I will guarantee you, although maybe, maybe I might be wrong, but I'll bet anyway, because I, you know, I'm a betting man. I will bet you Terry Sullivan or somebody's back in front of the council after we pass this budget for more money for their department. That happens every year. It happens every year. But isn't that what a budget's for? Isn't that what a budget's for? A budget in other communities that don't have the problems we do and have much better and more efficient governments. When a department head goes before the council, they have a list of everything they project to do that year, everything they need that year, and how it is incorporated into their budget. They will not go before a city council for any additional money unless it's something that was unforeseen. We go back in front of the council, we every single budget cycle, within three months, three to six months, somebody's in there looking for more money. Well, they should be fired because that's what they get paid to do as a department head. Run their damn department and come up with a budget that reflects the necessity and their necessities for that particular year. That's what a budget is. When you make your budget, you can't leave out half the crap you got to pay. Well, I'm going to make up a budget, but I'm not going to put in my electric bill. I'm not going to put in my heating bill. I'm not going to put in my mortgage. And this is my budget. Oh, I'll go back later and, and stick it in my budget. Well, guess what? Then you won't be living in a house. And if you do, it'll be dark and cold. Kind of like the studio, only the studio is yeah, bright and it's cold. freezing today. <laughs> but you know something? Uh, when I see this, look, this is the biggest sham in the world. Look, the, the government, this go the government is the dance of the chickens. That's all they do is, is, is cluck around like chickens and, and, and make all these grandiose gestures like they're actually doing something. And we know it's absolute crap. It's absolute crap. I will give you some more of the crap. 
The mayor talks about it's not prudent to budget uh, in anticipation of anything. It, this is what he said. Isn't this the guy that was factoring in how much money we were going to get from signs, from wind power, and everything else into the budget? Yep. Am I wrong? Not that I know of. Didn't, didn't he, hasn't he numerous times factored in anticipated revenue? But all of a sudden in his budget, you can't do that. Uh, it, it's, un, it's just unbelievable. It, it, you know, uh, it's just, it, it makes me crazy. Well, one, one of the things that makes me laugh, you know, you brought this up, that every, every city council meeting, a department head comes forward and asking for money. Or the school department's asking for money. Or somebody's asking for money. Here's what I believe happens. They make a budget as dictated by the mayor, which makes the budget proposal look good, especially in an election cycle. And then he says, come back later and get some more money. <laughs> just keep it as low of a ball as possible. Just come back later. And that's why we have such a financial mess in the city. And that's what I firmly believe he does. And yeah. not only this mayor, I believe every mayor has done that. Well, I mean, he's, do he's done it to, I think, even, he's, he's, he's elevated it to an art form. But the reality is, that's the reason that, that a forensic audit is an expletive in this city. When you say that, they all, they all put their hands up, uh, over their ears and start running around in circles yelling, Stop it, stop it. We can't have a forensic audit. That's a criminal. That's criminal. We can't have a forensic audit. Of course we can. And number one, it's got nothing to do with criminal. Well, it is used in criminal cases because that's what a forensic audit does. Because a forensic audit, rather than just adding up numbers, which they never do anyway because they admitted under oath it was a reconciliation and a recreation. It wasn't an audit because they didn't have the accurate numbers. And they did that under oath, and I still have the deposition. Uh, but the reality is a forensic audit looks for compliance with laws. You just can't do things that violate state law if you're running a city budget. And a forensic audit would look to see if you, you know, like the time they, they testified when we were, we were in arbitration that the auditor and the treasurer both testified that they backdated checks. You can't do that. You can't backdate a check. It's illegal. Yet they testified under oath they did it. Did they go to jail? No, that's why they don't want a forensic audit. Because in, in, at the end of a fiscal year, the books have to be closed. That's where they certify free cash. The books have to be closed. If you get a retroactive paycheck or a retroactive anything that goes to the to, to something that was from a previous fiscal year, you have to go before the city council and have it appropriated because it's in a different fiscal year. They did that every single time we got retroactive pays in collective bargaining agreements. It's the law. Who cares about you the law? You can't sign a check to pay a bill from 2018 and pretend it was from the 2018 budget when you're writing it from the 2019 budget, and that's what they did. And like I said, this is all just a big, this is what government does. Government can get away with anything because they make the rules. Actually, they are the true definition of a sovereign citizen. They are sovereign citizens, the government. It's a sovereign government. You know what that means? They, don't, they do not believe in the law. They make their own laws. They don't adhere to the laws. If you go out into the, some of these Midwestern uh, states and, and, and there are a lot of what they call them radical groups, but they have what they call sovereign citizens, and they don't, they don't abide by, if the police stop them, they don't 
they don't care because they don't they don't agree with any they don't pay their taxes they don't do a lot of things but that's what the government is you know that's what congressmen are they make their own laws they don't give a damn they don't do anything they don't fix anything because nothing affects them because they make sure that they have great health care they don't have problems with, they don't care what pharmaceuticals cost because they get them anyway at no cost so you know all this stuff and they're gonna make a big deal out of it we'll have a giant dance of the of the giant chickens while we do this budget and there'll be a lot of there'll be a lot of talking and they'll take this budget apart and they'll be questioning it. they'll have all the little highlighted papers and stuff and it means absolutely nothing as you said CJ this is just a sham it's just like they'll all be back for more money there'll be transfers throughout the fiscal year because this budget is absolute BS not a small lowercase bf but a giant highest largest font you can get bs enough fertilizer for the whole city that's right <laughs> you could fertilize the whole state with this budget so uh, again i'll say well, what's the, the, the taxpayer dressed up smacker is saying remember this at the polls in november yeah well what's also interesting is and remember this not only is this budget $313 million, but that doesn't include the money the city's going to take out of the CPA. Because we know that every CPA meeting, there's something that the city needs for an That's emergency. Right. A roof, a building, a, a piece of land, always for emergencies. It doesn't come out of the budget, it comes out of the CPA. And when you look at this, I mean, $1.8 million came out of the CPA budget last, in, the, in its fourth year. Uh, yeah. Out of the 18 projects that were under the committee's consideration, 14 were approved, with 817,107 going to historic preservation, 444,190 to open space, and $550,000, an unusual amount of appropriation going to community housing, which I find very interesting. Yeah. Um, but the, th the big thing is, the big ticket items were in the housing category for two local developers, Alan Macomba, imagine that. <laughs> Housing and Arts Development at 64 Jeffrey Street. Yeah. And Sousa said it was a, uh, a yeah. real critical project for our city. Oh, yeah, because we've got so many, so many art lovers in this city. This is, this is like, it's just like, I mean, we're, we're going to rival Broadway soon. I, I know. But they didn't talk about the fact that they also took out, um, oh, and Cadero, Tony Cadero was awarded $250,000 for the installation of an elevator. Oh yeah, to yeah. Tony Cadero really needs the money. How right. many buildings does he own? Uh, big. I'm a, I'm the cover of the entrepreneur uh, city. The man who's building the city. Yeah, with with taxpayer money. Yeah, well, I, yeah, we, because he gets everything. He gets tips. He gets CPA money. He gets everything. What do you, What do you get, homeowner? You get the salami. That's right. That's what you get. So remember, but look, they just say whatever the hell they want. And, and this is, I found the, the section in this, in this article. Though the city has a total of 10 companies in various stages of opening some kind of business tied to marijuana, which is a, in, its, in itself is a, a city. We, we will have a city. We don't have, we don't have something that, that uh, proportionally to the, to the, to the to our uh, number of people, to our population, that is positive. We, we're opening up pot places, but it says that though we have a total of 10 companies so in, in, in some stage of opening, Chris said it would be, and this is a quote, not be, quote, prudent fiscally, unquote, to budget around their potential openings. Why not? Didn't we budget about the signs that we, we were going to rent? We budget for didn't we, around didn't we, things. Didn't we stick in a budget a while ago, or is my memory serving me incorrectly? Weren't they going to stick towers on top of the, the city hall? Yeah. yeah. Right, there, right there, Gramada Plaza, where the flagpoles are. They we're going to put a big sign there. Yeah. Is it there? No, not yet. Did they factor that in? I think yes, they, they did. I think they factored in for the. That's uh, right, and they factored in wind power and everything else. Look, you know, you know how you can tell these people are full of crap. Their lips are moving. Pay attention. They're unable to crack the code. 
on how to not raise taxes. Well, guess what? When you stop bringing in budgets like this, which are full of baloney, and you know you don't have the money, and you've got to move around money like Chinese checkers and scurry around to fund what you have in your budget and all the pay raises and keep giving them out, guess what? You're never going to crack the code because the code is streamline your government, cut some costs, not increase your costs. And like I said, my buddy Milton, like he said, you give them the Sahara Desert, they'll run out of, they'll run out of sand in five years. So is this unique to government? No. All they know how to do is spend money. Every problem has one solution. Tax, MOA, and throw money at it. So that's, that, that's what we do. So, you know, remember, everything they say is a contradiction of something they said earlier because we have seen it. They, well, we have been fiscally not prudent because the mayor says now it's not fiscally prudent to anticipate revenue. Well, he does it all the time. I believe the term is fiscally irresponsible. Yeah, well, we can't call him irresponsible. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you know, he, you know, he's, like I said, all these geniuses are coming up with this thing, and you know what this is? Propaganda. This is, this is Yosef Goebbels' budgets. You know, tell him a lie, tell him a big enough lie. In this, in this case, it's a $313 million lie, which is a lot. I mean, I think the mega mega millions is about around 300 million tonight so if we hit that we can we can not send out the tax bills but you know it's all it's all bs know what it is bs and then when these people are running around in in august campaigning for the primary in the city council let's hope we have some new councilors who are running for office who will run on a platform of fiscal responsibility without the prefix <laughs> <laughs> without the prefix not fiscal irresponsibility i want to see one city i'll tell you what you got my vote i don't care what your other platform is if you tell me you will not ever give a front-end loaded tiff and you won't give a tiff unless it's an absolute necessity until we control our tax rate you got my vote. I don't care what the rest of your platform is. I don't care if you're pro-con, if you're Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, or alien. I don't care. I don't care if you're from Pluto. If you're going to try to, for once, put the taxpayer first, you got my vote. Yeah, but you know, the, what happens is that they're one vote out of nine. Yeah. And the other eight are usually, you know, stupid. The only person so far this year, and a lot of people don't like him, the only person good so far this year I think has been Sean Kadeem. Because yeah. he has been bamming, I mean, slamming them on financial issues, slamming the, the, the administration. And they get all upset. Yeah. I mean, Kathy Ann gets all flustered whenever Sean Kadeem starts asking questions. You can see it on her face, like, I really don't want to do this. Yeah. Well, because he's got a background, and he knows, because he, he was the city administrator. But the other thing is that what disturbs me is that Sean Kazim says that, and most of the time he votes for what he just no, I, dismantled. I, well, In many I, cases, he has. Yeah. But, you know, I, and that's where I, 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 you know, and I understand that. And that's one of the problems with the system. But you know something? If you got one person on that council who takes a stand for the taxpayer, they may get voted down eight to one. But, you know, when people begin to watch that and read about that in the newspaper and see that on TV besides us complaining about it on every show, they actually may realize, you know something? That guy was right, or that, that, that person was right. And he got voted on eight. To, let's put some more people like him on the council. Exactly. And you know something? The next council, we may have three, and then four. And then all of a sudden, a, mir a miraculous change will come about in our government. The taxpayer will have a majority vote on the city council and maybe then we will crack the code it's a possibility hey one of our viewers just sent me a message saying 
golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it does. That's right. And, and regardless of what any rules are, there's no rules. Because let's face it, what's our, what's our, the ultimate rule in the state of Massachusetts? The ultimate rule is the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And what does the Constitution of our state say about politicians? They are answerable and are agents at all times. And do they answer to us? <laughs> Forget about it. They do not, once they get elected, they, they assume that they are the monarchs. They make the rules. Listen, you elected me, I run the government. That's not what our Constitution says. So, you know, I have to, you know, I understand the concept of that adage, and it's, it's fundamentally true, but it's not he who has the gold, you know, makes the, well, no. It's like once you get elected in this society, we no longer have a democracy, as I, I have said for a very long time. This is a constitutional monarchy, and the Constitution isn't worth anything because nobody pays attention to it. True. And yeah. I, I always thought that the, role, the rule in Massachusetts, the golden rule in Massachusetts was, when in doubt, tax them out. That's right. <laughs> tax a choose. That's right. You know, it's like, who cares? And it'll be, it'll be refreshing to be down in a, you know, I, I disagree with some of the things in Texas, but it will be nice to go down to that, uh, down there and, and, and see a state that is really, you know, fairly conservative with many things. And you know, they actually worry about certain things that we don't worry about. Because up here, every time you open up the paper, it's about state takes first step toward cannabis cafes. Let's, you know, key lawmakers undecided on sports betting legislation. Well, why should we get sports betting legislation? Why? Because they're probably getting kickbacks from Rhode Island because the Rhode Island congressional delegation is already trying to stop the casino in Taunton because the Indians just got a, just got the okay, or, or preliminary okay, to build a casino in Taunton. And anything that will bring revenue to our area, well, Rhode Island wants to stop it because they're doing okay with their casinos. They're getting money. They got jobs. They got some money. They got an infusion of money into their economy, and they're going to stop it. And I and half the Massachusetts lawmakers are probably getting kickbacks from the casinos in Rhode Island. So we can't get anything that might relieve the burden on the taxpayer. Why would you want to do something so like that? So shame on them. Why would you want to do something like that? I mean, really, it's a, it's a shame. And now, now we're talking about screwing the taxpayer. Yep. Audit <laughs> reveals over $22 million in wasteful spending on the Veterans Memorial Bridge construction. <laughs> $22 million wasted. Can't believe it. Has yeah. revealed that the state transportation officials chose not to seek reimbursement for over $22 million in wasteful costs overruns associated with the construction of the Veterans Memorial Bridge, Fall River, and Somerset. An October audit by the Office of Massachusetts Inspector General Glenn A. Cunha has outlined a series of redundant contracts and unnecessary <laughs> expenditures tied to the project to build the bridge between 2006 and 2011. Yeah. It would be a full seven years before the waste, as can you refer to it, was reported. Yeah, and read the, in the, other, the other section. Compounding the nearly $16 million that could have been recovered, it was another $7.4 million that the Inspector General identified as, quote, equita an equitable adjustment, unquote, paid to a second contractor. Uh, for costs, quote, largely because of errors, omissions in the bridge design, unquote. We all know they put the pilings in the wrong place on the bridge. <laughs> of course. Right? First, and this is the great thing. Most of these contractors are in politically with, with, with Boston. And that's how they get these contracts. And when they screw up like this, they, get, they actually make more money because they got paid. So even the money they got for the work they did, they should have been building that bridge for free because they put the pilings in the wrong place. Did anybody go to jail? Did anybody get fired? No, because when you are a political, if you are politically connected or in government, only when you got a government project can you steal $22 million in wasteful spending and not go to jail. That's it. Once in a while, they throw a they throw a small fish in there just to make it look good. So that's true. Hey, I'll see I'll see you all uh, later. Uh, see you in a week on Friday. See you in a week. And, and stay angry until then. And please don't go through too many detox from not seeing us. Have a great weekend. <laughs> bye bye.